guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Kimberly from It's Only Homeschooling. I have TA, teaching assistant Otis here, helping us do our curriculum review and flip through today. If you've never been here before, thank you so much for stopping by. Please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button, especially if you like this video, and ring the bell so you can tell when we have new videos come out. At so in previous videos, we talked about how we are doing our third grade reboot, where we are ditching some old curriculum and trying out something new. As part of our review today, our review from a yoga ball, because <laughs> sensory, um, we are switching from Saxon Math 3 to Bob Jones University Press Math 3. So stay tuned for a little bit of a flip through and some first impressions. I'm Kimberly and welcome to my channel. I'm a licensed professional counselor turned homeschool mama of one amazing little boy. Here at It's Only Homeschooling, you'll find all kinds of resources for homeschooling your only child with special needs. In our case, developmental coordination disorder. You'll find curriculum and product reviews, occupational and physical therapy, play, activities, lesson plans, and all kinds of resources, along with a healthy dose of humor and a whole lot of faith. couple of years in our homeschool we have used Saxon and if you want to learn more about why we decided to uh, switch to a new math curriculum what our struggles were um, please click the link in the in the video below and you can find all about why we decided to ditch Saxon but here today let's go ahead and do a quick review let's start with the teachers manuals okay. okay so right away initially one of the biggest differences between BJU and Saxon is the fact that BJU is a math program written primarily from a biblical worldview, a Christian perspective entirely. And while Saxon itself is more of a secular math program, we are gravitating to something new, so that was actually a feature we looked forward to. The way the books are set up, or the programs are set up, is a little bit different as well. BJU seems to divide their topics into chapters with um, a certain number of lessons per chapter, whereas Saxon just lists a total of, I think there's like something like 140 lessons, as opposed to breaking the concepts up into chapters. Both programs um, introduce a concept, touch on it just a little bit, and then switch to a different concept. But it appears as though BJU includes more than a couple of lessons as opposed to just going from, oh, okay, today we're going to do data, and then tomorrow we're going to do addition and subtraction facts, and then the next day we're going to do uh, reading a thermometer. Uh, Saxon does come back to those different subjects, but they seem to switch from one day to the next to the next, whereas it looks like in BJU, you at least have a chapter to cover the material, and then you do a review, take your test, and if you need more review, you can do more, and then you move on to the next chapter. One really nice feature that I'm finding so far after I've taken a minute to, after the unboxing, and look through the materials from BJU, what I really like is the color coding that we have here on the side of the teacher's manual. Really strong, sturdy binding, and also a really nice hard back that keeps it from kind of being just a little bit too flimsy. The color coding corresponds to whatever chapter it is that you happen to be doing at that time. We have kind of a, a sunburst yellow here for addition and subtraction facts. And if you look, it also corresponds to the binding and that lets you know here what the lessons are that you're going to be doing that all of these lessons are in chapter one. As far as binding for Saxon, it does have a nice, strong, sturdy coil, um, but it's flimsy. <laughs> and it's floppy, and if I'm going up to the whiteboard to do a lesson, it's kind of hard to hold this and flip it over and hold it in one arm and then write on my whiteboard for the rest of the lesson. So I can already tell you that from my first impressions, BJU seems to be a winner there. Okay, while both programs seem to offer a script, which is something I have mentioned many times before that, that I enjoy, 
um, that, that helps me with my confidence. They do seem to offer you a script for what you might need to say to kind of help kind of handhold you if you're not um, very comfortable in teaching math. The one thing that I'm noticing about the scripts in BJU um, versus the scripts in Saxon, Saxons are, are very, very basic. They're very, very repetitive, and they can be a little bit boring. Um, there's not even any color in the teacher's manual, just, just the same as there is with the rest of the materials. It's very dull and hard to look at. Um, whereas in BJU, it's bright, it's colorful. They tell you the objectives for the lessons that you're going to be doing. They um, tell you what materials you're going to need. Um, they start out with a practice and a review so that you know what concepts you need to review before you progress on to your lesson that you're gonna be teaching for that day. They um, give you a focus to help you teach for understanding so you can grasp the full concept. Um, and they also anticipate in their script um, it, it, it is hand-holding, but it's all, that's something that we prefer in our house. The different um, questions um, that students might ask and how you might prompt them to come to their own level of understanding as opposed to just saying, okay, this is the answer, but rather here is how you arrived at this answer. So far, one minor difference, and this is just such a minor flaw. Um, we have always used it, the term regrouping. Here in BJU, they seem to be using the term renaming for when you are borrowing or breaking up a group of tens or groups of hundreds for um, your math facts. But that is something minor and something we can easily adjust to. In BJU, they seem to refer to the student's materials as the work text and it is the workbook in Saxon. So the, the materials in the workbook correspond to the lessons that are as they're outlined in the teacher's manual. And there's a lot of repetition of worksheets as well. You do have a front and a back page, and the way it goes in Saxon is you are to do the front page with them after the lesson, at the end of the lesson. Um, you do the front page with them together, and then they do the second page independently. But as you can see, the pages are kind of boring, for lack of a better way of putting it. They're not very inviting. Now, for some students, this might work actually quite well. If you have a student who is very distracted by too many things on the page, if there's too many problems, if bright colors and things are a hindrance to them, this might actually work really well for them. It worked okay for us for the first two years, but now we're finding that we're changing and need something a little different. So let's take a look inside of our first very look inside BJU. Okay, so it seems to start out with connecting um, math with biblical principles because everything is from a Christian worldview. Oh, look how pretty. Okay, I know math shouldn't be pretty, but for someone who struggles with math quite like I do, it's kind of nice, nice to look at math and go, oh, look how pretty. Okay, so it seems to be similar with about the same number of problems per page but enough to catch the eye and keep you interested so that you're not falling asleep <laughs> during your math lesson. Or maybe that's just making speaking for myself. Okay, so it does go on to the next page um, as opposed to just one page, but it doesn't seem to be like a lot. And if I needed to even modify this for him, if we're struggling with the handwriting, the problems seem to be a little bit bigger. So it, it looks like there might be fewer on the page, maybe. Let's see, are they similar in size? Yeah, the writing is a little bit smaller here. And if your child, your kiddo, has some visual tracking issues, kind of like my son does, his vision's 2020, but with, uh, with tracking from, like, like say, copy work from something from the board, or tracking from a textbook to, um, to another page, um, tracking those uh, visual tracking issues, I, I can see how breaking up the page with the different sorts of problems and different colors might actually be, be helpful because it could draw your attention. We'll see how it goes. We'll definitely try this out and see. So taking a look at the different workbooks, for me, I'm not sure how he's gonna do, but I would absolutely prefer to do this all day. It's colorful, it's pretty, it's clear. The instructions seem to be conducive to independent work. Oh, pretty, look at that, That's some pretty artwork. Am I getting it in the picture? There we go. Some pretty artwork. 
Okay, so here is where we're going to see some really major differences as far as manipulatives go. Now, not necessarily in terms of their utility. It doesn't mean that I can't use the manipulatives that are going to come with BJU. But if you have a child like mine who is a tactile learner, they really like getting their hands on things and getting there to play with things. And they're, um, I think the term is kinesthetic learner. They learn by doing and they learn by touch. Um, then I do remember now, this is one of the reasons why we picked Saxon initially when we were starting with first grade math. These manipulatives are just, they're fun. And just like I keep a lot of fidgets around for my child, um, these manipulatives are really great. We have used these number blocks, I can't tell you how many times as far as counting and helping memorize our math facts because we still sometimes have to utilize a visual aid to help us memorize that. The clocks are fun. This, this scale is so much fun. We've even used this in another subject. We've used it in science as well. Um, and the, the pattern blocks. This is one of our absolute favorite for learning uh, geometry and for shapes and angles and even um, fractions for dividing these in half. These have been absolutely a joy to, to play with. Um, to play with our learning. The geo board with the geo bands, they're a lot of fun too for making shapes and angles. So the manipulative kit and the manipulatives kit in Saxon is pretty outstanding and a lot of fun. To, but to be quite honest, how often do I use these in third grade? We have not used the scale yet so far this year. We made it into lesson 37 before we decided to switch. We do use the clocks on a daily basis, but you don't necessarily have to use these clocks. You can use any other clock manipulative that you have in your home. Um, you can use Legos instead of counting blocks, which is also more fun. You don't necessarily need the manipulatives packet. So yes, these are fun to play with, but are they necessary? Not really. So now BJ use manipulative kit. Let's see how it looks. Okay, so it's a good sturdy cardboard and it's, I wonder if you could dry erase with this. It's quite possible. It feels like it's laminated with a good plastic coating. Um, let's see, place value here with ones, tens, hundreds. This is very, very useful. I write this on the board several times, sorry, as I try to get this in frame for you, um, for showing why we just don't add a zero at the end when we're multiplying by 10 why that becomes a problem later when we're doing decimals. Um, number line manipulatives, acorns for counting, um, pennies that look like good old Abe himself. Oh, this is one thing that is very fun is the money. It, it it's kind of gives transference of real skills into real world. And so you can count in hundreds. So the manipula packet, manipulative, I cannot say that word today, packet looks pretty good. It's pretty sturdy, um, but if your kiddo tends to struggle, I should say, with um, sensory issues like our, my kiddo does and doesn't always understand the right amount of pressure to put on a toy or a pencil or anything else, I don't know how long these manipulatives are going to last in my house for repeated use. Uh, we'll see. I'll keep you posted. Um, a lot of times kiddos with a developmental coordination disorder or with sensory processing disorder or similar related neurodevelopmental conditions um, have a hard time knowing how much pressure to put on using a pencil. They often break pencils or break crayons or break toys and they simply don't mean to. It just has to do with um, their proprioceptive system not really letting them know um, how hard they're squeezing something um, to put pressure on it. Um, but the manipulatives packet looks pretty good. We've got fraction pieces here. This is something that in Saxon we would have to, they would probably tell us the night before, get your lesson out and go ahead and cut out all these things and do all of these things and have it ready the next day. And quite frankly, when you're teaching several subjects, you don't always have time to do that next step. So it is kind of nice to have it already done for you. Okay, so that just gives you a little bit of an idea of the difference between what the manipulatives packet, or I should say in our case, manipulatives bag looks like in our house versus Saxon and BJU. Okay, now here is something that Saxon did not have. Um, BJU seems to have provided an additional reviews manual, but it looks like um, these pages are not as colorful, but that's okay. They're review. And then you also have a review answer key. 
This is, seems to be another useful tool that comes with BJU, something that we did not have with Saxon. Okay, let's talk about as testing or assessment components in um, Saxon versus BJU. In Saxon, assessments or their tests are referred to as assessments and they do two types. They have an oral assessment and they have a written assessment. Um, their oral assessment um, usually just involves, it's, it's an oral review of things such as counting or telling time or um, other such concepts, any previously taught concepts. And they also give written assessments that are usually come about every fifth or tenth lesson just to kind of make sure to see where you are, to see if you've um, if you need to review any more of um, previously taught material or to see that you've had mastery. They give you, they let you know that you're going to have a test for that day up here with the lesson preparation. Like it gives you an example, here's a written assessment and it tells you which one it corresponds to and it can be found in the student work, workbook. So here, like for example, lesson 40 tells you that the written assessment is going to be written assessment number seven. So you would flip and this is where you would find it, front and back. And then you can also find how to score your assessments. It's in the, at the end of that very same lesson plan, here at the end. So that is how testing and assessment is handled in Saxon. Okay, with BJU, tests come at the end of a chapter. So here we happen to have in chapter one, nine lessons, and it tells you in your script, okay, we're gonna do our concept review, um, our cumulative review, and then we are going to have chapter one tests. The tests come in a separate packet. It's not in the student work text. And I'm not going to flip through and give you a whole bunch of information there about it. But I, again, I like how the spacing is done. They seem to be front and back, pretty much the same as it was in Saxon, but still concepts in there that are a bit more inviting, even, even though there's not any color. And then there's provided an answer key. yoga ball while my son, our homeschooler, chases the family dog. <laughs>